Hi, everybody. Welcome to the VAU Mic Check. And we are back with another good one. This is we're back. a dual character script. So we're going to be pairing up in reading this or performing this because really these are characters. Even though it's a commercial script, you get characters in commercial copy. I mean, you look at commercials like Geico. Um, well, you name them. You've seen them. They're characters. Yeah, even even if the character is serious, it's still the character. Like exactly. that's that's actually what it's like with every script, technically. Because even if it's something as more as boring as like um, an industrial script or you know whatever it may be, um, regardless of what's going on, you're always playing a character. And with that said, uh, Michael said he wants to try doing this first. So I'll let's be say the characters first. Okay, who wants to be B2? I guess I'll do it. Okay. okay. All right, John, you ready? Yeah, you um, going for a funny B voice? Uh, I haven't decided. Okay. We'll just, you know, I'll just fill this thing out. All right. All right. Let's do this. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, Hey, hey, you bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey-baked ham? No, you haven't. However, you love it, you enjoy it, but you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. We're going on strike. <laughs> Oh, wait. <laughs> That's already happening. But anyway. I caught something there in B number two's final line. Mm -hmm. It was like, it seemed to lack the punch that those words actually have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it seemed to lack the punch of the sting. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little too fast, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, there's a little hint of sarcasm that, that's thrown in underneath all of that. You know? And you wonder why we sting. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, wonder needs to be accentuated. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, imagine at that point you're folding your arms and are like, you know, the, the harumph sort of feel to it. Because you, you actually hit that when you said, no, you haven't. Mm. But then you kind of uh, slowed it down and, and kind of lost your energy on that last line. Okay. Well, there's that word. There's that word. Energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dodge isn't here, so I can't use peaks and valleys. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, anything that you noted in B1's performance, by chance? Anything? Um, I didn't hear the question mark on the end of Honey Baked Ham. Okay. Yeah. Now, you, you, your accent adjusted just a little bit on that line because when you started out it, it wasn't as notable but that's just a small nitpicky thing oh boy and i gotta yeah, bring my dogs on in so i will be right back in just a second because michael let the dogs out ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> i knew that would come up <clears throat> See, I thought this would be a fun little script because it gets us to ensemble a little more. Yeah, it's cute. Okay. It's the first back and forth I've seen through this uh, group. The timing was great between both of you. Uh -huh. All righty then. Well, shall we give it another go? Yeah, I'll give it another take. All right. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, Hey, you bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey-baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. Or what? Yeah. Mm, that last line. Uh, pick up. Whatever. You love it, you enjoy it. But you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. 
Yeah, there was more energy in that one last that last line. Although I, I I don't know personally, I'd like to hear a little bit more of a um a little bit more of a, a, a I don't know how else to describe it, but like a shift in the energy at wonder. Yeah, and yeah, wonder why we sting, Mister Sulu. Snark factor ten. <laughs> okay, yeah, jack up the snark the snarkiness. Okay, yeah, the snarkiness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All was, the snark, give it all of it. I was looking at it from more of like an incredulous point of view, but uh, yeah, gotcha. All right, so let's try this one more time. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, hey, you bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey-baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it, you enjoy it, but you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. Ooh. How about that? I felt that. And you wonder why we sting. That was good. Yeah, well, I like to feel it a lot better myself. And, and I like that Michael didn't really try for the accent this time. He just kind of let himself be. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. 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 I see what you did there. Yeah, I let it be. Let it be, let it be. <laughs> well, um, what did you all think about that? Any other opinions on it? Because one thing I'd like to try is actually flipping roles. Okay. You want me to do number one? Yes, you can do uh, B1. Okay. Any, any other comments before we get into that? No. All right, here we go. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, hey, you, bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey-baked ham? No, you have it. Whatever. You love it, you enjoy it, but you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. Man, I'm that roll flip worked well for both of you. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that whole question, I totally missed it. Hey, you, B. It's just strangely worded. It, it really is. Yeah. I don't know how you're supposed to make that sound like a question when you're addressing somebody like that. with Hey, you, B. But then... I don't know. It's strange copy, but it, 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 <laughs> I think it's it really is odd than it is the way it's uh, uh, done because you're, you're like quoting the person and then you're going back into your question. But it works. I mean, yeah. I'm starting to learn not to question the copywriters. They, they I guess they, they get paid for doing what they're doing for a reason. It yeah. doesn't always make sense, but yeah. Occasionally it's just a matter of adjusting the punctuation uh-huh. or marking it out to make it work for how you would speak. Because ultimately these are your words when you're reading the script. You know. Mark your copy. You're, you're, you're expressing yes. your thoughts because you are the B. Always mark your copy. You are the bee. <laughs> be the bee. Why am I suddenly thinking of Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. I, I was actually picturing the little guy from the Cheerios commercial. Or John oh, Belushi and Lorraine, whatever, Newman from... Oh, oh yes, yeah, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe in bees? <laughs> you know, that's kind of, I think, the direction they were going with this. Yeah. Oh. If you remember that sketch, I don't remember it very well. I do remember seeing John Belushi in a bee outfit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, remember, I think I was six years old when that sketch was done. Uh, yeah, yeah it was, that was a while back. Mid the late 70s, I guess it was. Yes. 
And I really didn't get introduced to SNL till I was in the fifth grade. Yeah. Anybody so guys, else want to take a crack at it? Or? You guys did a fantastic job. Yeah, you guys did a great job. Thank you, Takia. Yeah. You may have to turn your audio up just a little bit, Takia. We'll have our uh, people call okay. your people. <laughs> <laughs> You two are cast in this role. You are bees. No, you do not need to come dressed as a bee. Please do not. <laughs> Last guy that did that, we had to kick him out of here. He was crazy. I've been doing a ton of character stuff lately. That's what's up. <laughs> Jane, you've been awful quiet. Hello. Or speaking of Seinfeld, hello. Remember that episode? I do remember that. Hello. Ho, ho, ho. Had a year or so ago, Rhonda and, Rhonda and I binge watched Seinfeld. So. <laughs> Are you there, Shane? I think I hear yeah. You. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. How about we take a crack at that? Yeah, let's do it. You want to do one or do you want one or two? I'll do B1. Okay. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, Hey, you, bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it. You enjoy it. But you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. Bravo. Yeah, that was pretty good, guys. I bought John, the beat voice and all. I was just saying, what did you think about that? Yeah. You guys sounded like bees. <laughs> I pictured in my mind Joe Pesci as a bee. You, you nailed it. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going uh, Honey Nut Cheerios B. <laughs> With an attitude. I think oh, Honey yeah. Nut Cheerios B is a little too happy for this. <laughs> if, if Joe Pesci oh, and Joe you Pesci. Know, oh, Joe Pesci. Yeah, there may have been an incident where uh, you know somebody did something to him and he's in an alley drinking out of a <laughs> brown paper sack. And... <laughs> I could hear Billy West doing this spot. I really could. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this would probably be a definitely good spot for Billy West. And who knows, he may have. <laughs> yeah, this may just be something from Billy West. <laughs> or something Billy West has done. I mean, he's done Honey Nut Cheerios B. Yeah, correct. So. Yeah, good, good memory. Then again, he's too, well, yeah, he's, he's been all over the place. Yeah, of course, I, I, I when I was looking at, uh, that last line for B number one, when it said, but you never thank us, what popped into my mind, and I mean in an instant, was the classic Jewish mother thing. You know, I must be a horrible mother. You never thank me for what I give you. <laughs> that kind of person, that, that, that kind of mindset that kept it on the Joe Pesci delivery. <laughs> Well, uh, the, you you definitely, the rolls? yeah, yeah try, try the roll flip this time. Okay. Okay, so I'm doing one this time? You yeah. are one. You okay. are B1. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, hey, you, bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey-baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it, you enjoy it, but you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. So first of all, I really like that interruption with the whatever. That was beautiful. I thought that was actually a really, 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 really great touch to it. Um, Secondly, though, uh, Nathan, when you went with uh, when you said that uh, and we're mad, that came off as more of like the we're crazy than the we're upset. 
too much. I picked too. up a little bit of that myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was more of like, you know, the Joker B. Yeah. It was mad. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit more of that than, and we're mad. Like, we're actually legitimately angry. And you Shane, your uh, your delivery of that kind of statement question in the second exchange, I spot on, man. Yeah, seriously, that, yeah, was, that was very good. Way to go! Ooh, I know how to fix that. Yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. Just adjusting my delivery just a shade with a little so basically, up. Shane. Yes, do what you do. Just keep it. Just keep on track. Yeah. Give us that again, yes. Nathan. Uh, make sure that the mad is angry mad, not uh, not Joker mad. <laughs> and uh, whenever you guys are ready, go for it. Give it another go. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. And apparently the script ended. I lost Shane. <laughs> yeah, did we lose Nathan? No, no oh, I'm oh. here. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? I can now. Yeah. Okay, oh, that okay. was really strange. After yeah, after I gave that first line, I didn't hear anything. Okay. Take two. Okay. Hi, we're bees, and we're mad. And I'm still getting nothing. And it dropped out on And We're Mad. <laughs> oh, man. What in the, and now I'm getting mad. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Let me pull away from the mic a little bit. I think that uh, Zoom may be cutting my audio out because it thinks I'm spiking too high. All right. I'm, uh, I'm just going to say that line and see what happens, okay? And okay. We're mad. Okay, did do Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, hey, you, bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey-baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it, you enjoy it, but you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. John, what did you think? Uh, you know, I, I think Nathan's character on that one um, was real believable. It was pretty much the same delivery from Shane. It was a great one the first time, except he didn't, you know, jump in with the whatever uh, and interrupt him. But it still was a good take. I think it's fine with or without the interruption, to tell you the truth. Um, it works both ways for me. But I think you guys, uh, yeah, you did a great job. Nice thing is you can cut out that uh, half-second pause and make that interruption happen in post. <laughs> <laughs> So if the producer wants it, he'll get it. <laughs> well, good job, you two. You hired. Awesome. All right. As for me, unfortunately, I do have to bow out now. Oh, I really hate it when this happens. Saturdays, they're uh, ridiculously busy for me at times. I don't know why. But anyway, um, good job, everybody. Thank you very much, and uh, I will see you all next week, hopefully with a lot more time. Ta-ta. We'll see you next week. All see, right. you, see you next week. Okay. The key, you want to take a shot? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, so sure. <laughs> now, now, um, the sound kind of hesitant. Uh huh. And this is all character stuff. So we're being all character all day long, and you are really good with the character stuff. Cool. So have some confidence. You'll do fine. Okay. <coughs> you know, and work like this as though you're doing improv. You just have the what you're supposed to say in front of you, but you're improving through this anyway. You are a bee. Okay. Now, let's see. How are we going to pair this up? 
I was I was thinking you, but eh. well, we can work together. That can work. Okay. Okay. Be good. Okay. Hmm. I think I'll do B two. <laughs> okay. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, "Hey, you bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey baked ham." No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it. You enjoy it, but you never thank us. And that's why we sting. Okay, you change that oh. line. Oh. It's supposed to be and you'll wonder why. Oh, yeah. Just do another take on that line. Okay. And you wonder why we sting. Good delivery. Mhm. Mm yeah, very, very good. Yeah. As soon as you adjusted the wording, your delivery came out just right. Ah. And you sounded very comfortable with every line you read. Okay. And this is the shortest script, so uh, <laughs> I guess, of course. <laughs> now, of course, you know scripts can be challenging even if they're short. Mm-hmm. We've had taglines in here that have made the best stumble. <laughs> <laughs> Great taste, less filling. Oh, that was a little too slow. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, let's flip this around. Okay. Hi, we're B. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, hey, you, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it, you enjoy it, but you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. Okay. The key, I'd say, uh, other than you know, just stumbling on the word "inspiring," there, you're. I like your delivery as B one better than as B two. Uh, um, you know, you the question. Uh, you know, have you ever thanked anyone for Honey Bay Camp? It that was a good delivery. Thank. You. Nick, you never thank. It. That was good too, right there. Yeah, exactly. It's like whatever. You did a little shrug of the shoulders. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, being the youngest person in the room, Takia yeah. understands whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roll your eyes when you say whatever. Uh, well, yeah. And is it a little more pronounced? <laughs> like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like teen, uh, teenager people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I pictured there, even though I'm not a teen anymore. Eh, I guess I still have the teen uh, um, in me, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I think once you get into your 50s, you shouldn't be allowed to say whatever anymore. It just doesn't yeah. work. I gave myself permission. Did you? I'm 46 years old, but I still yeah. say it. <laughs> like a teenager. Whatever. Come on. No, there has to be a hard pause after the what. It's whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yep, yep. Like for sure, dude. Whatever. My uh, youngest is going to be 12 at the end of the month, and she's well into that stomping the feet, whatever, rolling the eyes, walking away, <laughs> slamming a bedroom door. Wow. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, some very minor inconvenience or something she wasn't you know, allowed <laughs> to have. Or, you know. No, you can't uh, have a third donut. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> no, the jacket is not on sale. You're not getting it. Whatever. Hmm. Yeah, you know, oh, it. Her, her first word was shoes. So I'm oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, those were the days. Yeah. Well, I've I've got two in college and one just graduated. So, yeah. Of course, my middle one is married now. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Mind blown. <laughs> I like to forget my age sometimes. And it's great to be an actor because I do get to forget my age. I can be whatever I want to be. Oh, here, I'm going to try it like this. Let's switch it up again. You'll be uh, Grandpa Nathan soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm thinking like Junior. <laughs> yeah. All right, Takia, I'm going to do this in one of my characters. Okay. Hi, we're bees. She's muted. Oh. There you oh. go. Oh, uh, what? I didn't know we were going. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah. We're going to do this again, but I'm going to throw one of my characters into it. Just oh, okay. okay. Hi, we're bees. Hold on. <laughs> 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 Gotta stay prepared. <laughs> yeah. We'll edit it in post. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take three. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, hey, you, bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it, you enjoy it, but you never thank us. And you wonder why we sing. Terrific delivery. Yeah, really good the way you drug that out to wonder why you sting. Ah, thank yeah, you. Good job. And you played off of my character. Yeah. Nice job. Ah, thanks. Yeah, it seems like you got a real good instinct for that. Playing, playing off that. It's good. Ah, uh, yeah, because um, I imagine myself doing character work. Uh, like many other voice actors out there. Um, not me. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, there's so many genres out there. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to do character work, there's promo. There's uh, audio books. There's e-learning. I see myself as the next uh, Sir Richard Attenborough. Hmm. Ah, documentaries. Ah. Notice how the male grouse approaches tentatively. <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take? How long does it take you to fall asleep listening to that? <laughs> wow. Kind of curious how this would sound. I mean, I'm going to be way character -y, but I'd like to pair up with John on this next one. Okay. And uh, do. do your do your Richard Attenborough style delivery, but you know, emoting on the words the way you would if you're an angry bee. And I'm B too. Or which one B which one. B one B one has way more delivery oh, okay. right yeah. there and Okay. Hello, we are bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up? <laughs> I'm sorry. You didn't expect that delivery, did no, you? No, no. <laughs> you totally threw me. You got to get ready for things out of the blue. No. <laughs> no, no. Oh, yes, I made him break character. <laughs> All right. Take two. Hello, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, Hey you, bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey-baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it. You enjoy it. But you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. I really must have you over to some estate. <laughs> oh, that would be delightful. I actually did two characters like that for Radio Spot. 
And uh, I mean, the, the background stuff that the producer put in there was beautiful because it sounded like two old guys walking in the park. Mm. And it, it kind of had a little bit of a Muppety uh, Looney Tunes kind of tone to it. Because one of my characters had that deep, throaty background. Oh, Bill, what have you been up to lately? <laughs> Yeah. Do you have any gray coupon? <laughs> yeah, that that was exactly what I was going for when I did that spot. I wrote these spots for this guy, so <laughs> everything but the tagline. <laughs> I think the secret to that character is extending your lower jaw out. Yes, and then not opening your t mouth very much when you speak. Yes, it's just very much right in there. Just watch Dustin Howell the Third and yeah, see how he performs his character. Indubitably. I watched tons of Gilligan's Island growing up, which who didn't? <laughs> you, know? you know, you could probably find it on right now. Mm -hmm. Or at some point during the yeah, day. It's either either uh, Me TV or Antenna TV has it. So, yeah. But yes, you see, I mean. This thing can, well, one, there's no spec script or spec on this script, so it kind of can go any direction with the characters you're choosing. But yeah, that's kind of why I saw it as maybe the voice of the little guy from the Honey Nut mm -hmm. Cheerios. And see, that's why I kind of, and of course, I pulled my character out of thin air and you weren't ready for it at all. But. I think I choked a little bit there. <laughs> Just after you made your delivery, what your 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 delivery actually influenced my choice mm -hmm. and i thought okay this will pair up nicely with that because it'll it'll stay in that vein you know because going from what you're doing to and we met you know doing the joe pesci thing it, it would be a little bit different but didn't seem like it would fit quite quite right with the way the script was delivering no, I can't see Richard <coughs> be hanging out with Joe Pesci. Be it would be kind of interesting, though. Yeah, I say let's try it that way. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the thing is is character scripts when you're coming up with something brand new that nobody's ever heard before, and you don't want to do what the other you know ninety guys in the room have done before you when you're doing an audition. So it's like, okay, I've got to make this you new and unique to me. That's the scary part yeah. is, you know, 90 other people. <laughs> you know, but. At that time, at that, you know, of course, if you're auditioning from your home, you don't see all that. And so yeah. it just kind of escapes your mind and you're just you being you in your booth. Hmm. Now, now the genre you're aiming at, you know, not being a, a, in the character vein will be a little bit different, but still you have kind of the same kind of thing going on because people are looking for a specific type of delivery, a specific type of tone, you know, all of that plays into it. Huh. Mm -hmm. you know? And so when you're giving them this, you're giving them the best you, you have, you know, and of course you let little things, words in the script, the way something will sound, adjust your, uh, and influence your choices. You know, um, I did two characters, um, Imogene and Henry. And uh, I'm going to do this as a standalone and do Imogene and Henry. Okay. Hi, we're bees and we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, hey, you bee, thanks for inspiring a great taste of honey back ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it. You enjoy it. But you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. They're the Mayberry bees. <laughs> Southern bees. Uh. Yeah. Let's see, I, 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 Imogene was kind of influenced from a, a couple of factors and uh, a couple of people that I actually know. And Henry was as well. Because there's a local pastor that has this very deep Virginia thing going on in the nasal. And so I just kind of pulled from him and just adjust a little bit. But see, it makes it a completely different type of script. You know? Now, that would almost be local to here or Alabama <laughs> or anywhere, you know. Mm. 
Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, that whole region, Arkansas. I mean, we have a Swaggerty's just down the road, so. <laughs> yeah, literally, um, yep, they process pork right down the road. <laughs> well, that was fun. But, okay, let's change this up a bit. And, okay, we've done the Richard Attenborough thing. I'm going to bring Shane in here since he's another. Yeah, uh, I actually had an idea on this one. Okay, throw it at me. The, basically kind of capitalizing on uh, the current events of the day. Well, I, I say current events of the day. and. And I know we don't have probably many sports fans amongst us, but um, when the you know the, the Cubs obviously winning the World Series was a very historic uh, for 108 years. And I don't know if anybody has seen, and this had to have been one of those like last minute slap together commercials that is one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen. But have you seen the Budweiser commercial where they have taken snippets of Harry Carey? doing play-by-play -play for the Cubs because, you know, he's been dead for almost 20 years now and, you know, wa wasn't alive to see the Cubs, but there was no bigger Cubs fan. But, but reading the script, it, it kind of reminds me of if you ever watched him do a Cubs game, especially maybe his last decade or so of doing play-by-play, -play, it was very little about the game. He would go off on these side tangents and tell these stories during the game, and the Cubs might turn a triple play, and he wouldn't even notice it. So, oh my god! I, I'm kind of reading the script. It almost sounds like some some sort of side tangent that he'd be off on during a Cubs game. You know, back in mid August when they were 38 games out of first and nowhere close to winning the pennant, and he was basically just talking to himself. Mm. So for B1, I, I wanted to do like a Harry Carey type thing. Okay. Have, and have you ever seen Will Ferrell do Harry Carey? No. Uh, you know, I haven't. Never? Mm -mm. He, that was a semi-regular thing he did on Saturday Night Live back when he was on. And just a, uh, maybe a week or so ago, he did this walk-on on Jimmy Kimmel as, as Gary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, I, like interrupts mo Kimmel's monologue. The, Hi, gang. <laughs> So yeah, whoever whoever wants to do it with me is B two. You can go in whatever direction you want, but B one, I'm I'm gonna play as Harry Carey. Okay, let's go for it. Okay. Hi hey, gang, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, Hey you, B, thanks for inspiring the great taste of Pony Baked Ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it, you enjoy it, but you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. Wow, uh, sounds just like the guy, Shane. <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> sounds just like the guy. You've done this for your radio stuff, haven't you? <laughs> no, actually... Um, like I said, he, Harry Carey is such a legendary character. If you, not only if you're a sports fan, but if you were a Cubs fan, because you know he was uh, WGN was one of those super stations, kind of like TBS in Atlanta. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that's really where I kind of developed a love for for getting into broadcasting. And Carey also was this larger than life guy who would do most of the games about three sheets to the wind when he showed up for work. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so that's that's where the – if he sounds like he's drunk, it's because he is, you know. <laughs> if you, I mean, if you really want some, uh, like, hours of entertainment, go to YouTube and pull up Will Ferrell doing his Harry Carey impression or just Carey himself. I found something the other day where he did a spot on the – David Letterman's old late night show from like 1991. And, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. He, he and Letterman were great together. And Letterman even asked him something about, you know, how much he liked to drink. And he's like, uh, well, you know, Dave, I feel like with everybody at least once in life, 
<laughs> wake up and do a baseball game with a morning hangover. You know, if you go to YouTube and put in a search and put in Will Ferrell, the yeah. first thing that comes up is Will Ferrell as Harry Carey. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, there are numerous, yeah, numerous stand-up comics that have, uh, you know, they, it, it, in their routines, they've got they their own Harry Carey take. And he's one impression I have not learned, but you did an excellent job with that. Yeah, on a, you know, he'd be in the middle of a game. There'd be a, like a dramatic at bat, and he'd look over at his partner, who a guy named Steve Stone, for who was who was a pitcher, and I think he played for the Cubs for a while. But uh, it, I, you know, it'd be like three and two, bases would be loaded, and you know, you'd be waiting on this dramatic last pitch. Hi, Steve. Look at that guy with a sombrero in left field. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's enjoying an ice cold Budweiser, the king of bears. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, uh, Kerry was actually the guy. And, you know, there's the tradition now at Wrigley Field of someone coming in and doing take me out to the ball game for the seventh inning stretch. And uh, typically they get, I mean, they get A-list names now. They get Bill Murray and, uh, you know, guys like the Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam did it during the World Series. But Kerry was the guy that would actually lead the Wrigley Field crowd and take me out to the ball game in the seventh inning. Wow. Yeah. Man. I got to pay more attention to sports, and I don't even like them. <laughs> Some. Right. Oh, I can hear that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three sheets. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is probably one of the last times he did it. It's pretty old here. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, your delivery was spot on. I mean, just... Yeah, there's also a... Um, one, the, the funniest story I've ever heard told on late night television. Does anybody remember Artie Lang that used to be Howard Stern's sidekick? Yeah. Okay, well, apparently, he and Norm MacDonald were invited out to Arizona where uh, – because Norm and Bob Uecker, who another legendary baseball guy and play-by-play -play guy, um, Uecker was doing a, a Brewers-Cubs game in Arizona, so he invites Norm, Norm and Artie out to, uh, to watch the game and to watch him do the game, the play-by-play. -play. And so the, the gist of the main story is that, that Artie – has uh, that uh, that Euchre is just this incredibly dirty guy that can literally at the drop of a hat he can he can be in the middle of a play and he'll see a hot girl in the crowd he'll hit the cough button on the mic comment to Artie and Norm some R-rated comment about the girl and then get right back into the play on t so but at the very end he tells this story at the very end about uh, them playing a them playing a gag on Carrie at some point where uh, they had a waitress, which I can't imagine that this would ever happen today, but they were eating at a steakhouse. They get Harry so drunk that they have the waitress bring out the last drink topless and the rest of them don't make any sort of an indication that they know that, that oh she's not God. wearing any clothes. Yeah. And um, so <laughs> Harry is trying to tell them, Hey, hi, let anybody see that waitress. She's topless. And, they were going, hey, Harry, are you hallucinating? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Classic. <laughs> what a prank. Yeah. Bob Euchre's so well-known that he plays himself in movies. It's pretty wild. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he was on Mr. Belvedere for... Uh... I didn't remember that. I think he had a sitcom of his own at one point. He, he may have. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was the 80s. Everybody had a sitcom. <laughs> or a talk show. <laughs> yeah. 
like nowadays everybody has a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are so many ways to come at this script and that that one was awesome. I mean, really it, it, I could see them using that right now. And you know? yeah. yeah, to capitalize on the yeah. I was sitting there trying to think of like the the guy that uh does this the announcing for Neyland Stadium when I was doing you know opposite to him and uh, I, yeah that are you talking about the actual play by play announcer for Tennessee or yeah well see the thing of it is is you can't go anywhere yeah, in him six. Yeah. during the game yeah without hearing this guy I mean because yeah. everybody in every convenience store from here to Newport and beyond yeah they're playing it on the radio. The guy that does it now is a guy named Bob Kessling. Um, I, I can't remember the guy before him, but he was the one that, uh, you know, every time Tennessee scored a touchdown, give him six. Yeah. It was always touchdown, Tennessee. Yeah. 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 And I'm not even native to Tennessee, but I'll tell you what, I've been here for 20 years. And if there's one thing they love in this area, it's their football. <laughs> oh, I, I was up there a couple of weeks ago for that very reason. So yeah, yeah you I'm, were. Yeah, I'm familiar. <laughs> You're in the neighborhood. My wife and I were driving right. town, and I'm like, you know what? I know where Shane's at right now. <laughs> I'm still mad at the Titans. I haven't been to a pro football game in years. I went to the Miami Titans game a few weeks ago, and <sighs> I hate to say it, but Tennessee handed them their rear ends, and yeah. you know, I'm laughing about it. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'm not a major sports fan. But like I said, you get inundated with it around here, especially during football season. When September hits, everything turns orange and white, mm. and it ain't the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, being from Kentucky, she's like, "Go no UK." <laughs> Yeah, you don't grow up in the state of Alabama and not have a. Uh, uh, you're you're either one or the other. There's no riding the fence. It's Alabama or it's Auburn. It's about two thirds of the state's Alabama. And, yeah. Well, you think about it. Florida has like three college teams. Yeah. Well, plus all the pro teams, and yeah. Yeah, and so it's like you you know, I lived in a tourist area in Florida, and it's like oh well. Whatever. Where, where was <laughs> yeah. that? Uh, I grew up in Orlando. Oh, okay. Yeah, the tourist area. Home of the mouse. Yeah. I, I live just outside of Fort Lauderdale. I don't know if that's what you meant, because yeah. you know, it can be considered a major tourist area there. Yeah. But in Florida, and, yeah, there may be three colleges, but it's really just the Gators and the, and the Hurricanes. <laughs> Maybe just one or the other. No, yeah, Florida State. That's yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Here, football's a national religion. <laughs> So. I mean, as far as the rivalry goes, you don't hear too many people, you know, I hate you because you're Florida State or whatever. It's, well, see, when Alabama was here, everybody knew about it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a whole nother long standing rivalry for yeah. years. A whole nother level right there. But anyway, back to VO. Oh, yeah, that's right. What we're here for is we make sports people look good. <laughs> yeah, you know, speaking of which, I've been kind of toying with a little imaging, um, you know, just a couple practice pieces here and there. I don't know. I might, uh, might pursue that genera as well. well. You'll see this right here, if it were Radio Spot, which – it can be because of the way they announce themselves at the open. Mm -hmm. Okay, It can go either way. You could use it for television, have it animated, or this could have been used for radio. So this is an imaging spot if it was used for radio. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about promo imaging. You know. Oh, promo type of stuff. Yeah. So do you have a piece of copy you're thinking of? Um, not here in front of me, but I just, I, I've taken a bunch of them from Edge Studio and made some recordings and kind of, you know, Cool Jazz 1099, stuff like that, you know. 
That is a good way of doing that. Yeah. It really works well. I mean, for practice purposes, it works excellently. Because you're getting in there, you're hearing yourself, you know. You know. Like with this piece of copy here. I mean, I love flipping characters. It's just one of those things. I just do it all day long. No, really, I do it all day long. Um, <laughs> I practice. I'm in a room by myself all day. So, you know, I'll just start thinking of like a character that I need to work on for a piece of copy I'm going to read. Mm -hmm. And I'll just start, you know, talking like that character. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. I think your voice is more cut out for that. I don't, I don't think I have the, the vocal range to pull off some of the stuff I hear you do. I used to hate my voice. I did. I couldn't stand it. But then I found out that all of this was made to be range. Mm. I envied you guys with the deep voices. Coming in. Hi, we're bees. <laughs> <laughs> I could try that in a lower register. Who wants to read this with me again? Um, I'll take a crack at it. Okay. You don't, want to, you don't want to be like the really deep voice speed of just uh, really. I'm going to try it in my lower register. Okay. okay. For me, All right. you, it's natural. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> All right. Um, you want me to take one or two? I'll take one. Okay. Hi, we're bees. And we're mad. Have you ever gone up to a bee and said, Hey, you, bee, thanks for inspiring the great taste of honey-baked ham? No, you haven't. Whatever. You love it. You enjoy it. But you never thank us. And you wonder why we sting. That was a couple of menacing bees there, huh? <laughs> All inked up. <laughs> Mafia bees. Those are bees from uh, Central Park. Mm. <laughs> I took it south and back north again. Hmm. Well, it's that flexibility of creating characters, you know? Yeah. I got to give it a lot more thought. I mean, I don't want to limit myself as I'm sort of trying to find myself here and uh, don't want to don't rule out something that might be a good choice for me, you know, in the long run. I have said this before, John, I'll say it again. That it's, in this business, especially if you're ever going to pursue it on a full-time basis, uh -huh. go with whatever pays you. Yeah. Exactly. Find, find the, uh, find whatever is, hot and in demand and lucrative and and master it and go with it right now it looks like e-learning is, is yeah for me it's been it's been mostly e-learning and um explainer videos that's mm -hmm. just about exclusively what i've been doing for probably past six months now and i think you've got a great sound for that sort of a genere i can totally see it you know i could hear you doing uh like uh movie trailers you know? Yeah, yeah. I um yeah, I love doing those spots, especially Halloween's a great time to do the uh the dramatic movie trailer delivery for as a matter of fact, our I my day job is radio and I actually put together a spot we our we I we have three stations in our group and we sponsor this horror movie marathon at a drive in that's about twenty miles up the road from where our station is and uh yeah, that, that that's always fun putting that thing together um, and sounding like this. And let's see if I can find it. I have a friend that did an ind independent film, and we never used it. But I was going to use his movie trailer as one of our pieces of copy in here. And I thought I might bring that in, just let you give it a shot. If I can find the. You know what? I don't know if I still have it. 
Because he gave me permission to use it in here. Aren't there like three people that do movie trailers, though? Really? Like in the whole world? Um, I think there's more than that. Yeah, I, I, I think I think there is, too. Um, <laughs> I mean, I know no, I, I, Go ahead. I, I mean, I think they all definitely have a lot of Don LaFontaine in them. But, well, that's uh, what I'm thinking, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, I, I mean, I think, it, well, especially now, with so many independent films being made, um, you know, um, I have actually, I've done a few of those, and I've done some, I actually did a, I played a character in a, uh, in a little short film, and like a student film, and then, which, actually, I was kind of surprised, this paid me pretty well for, uh, to be a student film, and it was one of those deals where, you know, the world was ending, and, and I was the radio guy, the news anchor, tell like, informing everybody what was happening and, and what was going on. And uh, so I've done that. I've done one or two little trailers for little small independent films. Um, one thing I'd really love to get into is the network level promo work. That's that's where you go in, you know, cut two lines and make a thousand dollars for. Amen. I have it. I have the trailer. Oh, I see it. Takes it into the. We're going to change this up, and we're going to cap this mic check off with a movie trailer. All right, cool. Throughout time, whatever time may be, epic struggles have taken place. Battles of good versus evil, light against darkness. Battles that overthrow suppression, inspiring and giving hope to them who had none. Turning generations of bondage into people of freedom. You sound like the guy that did this originally. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't happen to know Bob Denny, do you? <laughs> The name sounds familiar. Is he a radio guy? Um, he actually owns CCN Radio. He's the guy to the uh, radio okay. box for, and uh, he wrote this for his movie uh, when he was promoting it. So yeah, <laughs> like hmm, yeah, you sounded almost identical to the trailer guy that he hired for this. <laughs> I was still yet very green in voice acting when he did this film. Actually, I was hadn't even stepped set foot into uh, a booth yet, so I kind of missed this one. I did. Yeah, get an extra uh, uh, there's a commercial that that we've had running for probably I don't know about a year or so. It's actually for a chain pizza place, but we cut it locally. It's a uh, have you ever heard of Stevie B's? One of those all you can eat pizza joints, kind of like CC's. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we we did a, like a video game because uh, the local guy loves you know creativity, and he's one of those that gives us license to you know just just get in the prod room and and do it and and go crazy with it. So we've done some really good stuff for him over the years, and uh, you know we did like a it was like a video game concept and trailer. That sounded a lot like that script. I really you you gave it a a, a Morgan Freeman esque feel. Oh, and, I could have gone a lot further with Morgan Freeman than that. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is is okay. It's like the it's not the direct impression thing, but you gave that same emotional delivery. Yeah. It, I'm gonna let John take a crack at this next. All right. Throughout time, whatever time may be, epic struggles have taken place. Battles of good versus evil, light against darkness. Battles that overthrow suppression, inspiring and giving hope to them who had none. Turning generations of bondage. Let me start over again, tripping over my tongue. 
Throughout time, whatever time may be, epic struggles have taken place. Battles of good versus evil, light against darkness. Battles that overthrow suppression. Inspiring and giving hope to them who had none. Turning generations of bondage into people of freedom. Hmm. The last line, you lost your energy. Okay. Yeah, and I, I go a little... I go a little heavy on the drama too, if uh, and the the building of suspense. I see. Okay. Just not enough feeling in it, then, huh? Yeah. Okay. You know, maybe if I give you a little synopsis of what the movie's about, okay? Because right. you do have this battle of light versus darkness. You have something going on in the spirit realm where there's angels of light fighting against angels of darkness. And you have something going on in the physical realm where a guy is trying to yeah, deal with the loss of his wife because she was murdered right in front of him, you know? And, uh, it, it I mean, it's a really hardcore kind of thing, but, uh, this guy's dealing with all of that and there's a battle going on for his life, literally for his very soul. So that's what you're pulling from. All right. That's pretty deep. All right. Throughout time, whatever time may be, epic struggles have taken place. Battles of good versus evil, light against darkness. Battles that overthrow suppression. Inspiring and giving hope to them who had none turning generations of bondage into people of freedom. Hmm. I know what to do. Okay. Remember I was talking about Pat Fraley and his good, bad method. Yeah. Okay. You're starting out. And of course you're talking about, epic struggles you know uh -huh. so um i'm going to kind of line read this so it's throughout time whatever time may be epic struggles have taken place battles of good versus evil light versus darkness you see how that's going uh -huh. where where you kind of well, running it through, uh, as Daz would say, peaks and valleys. You're contrasting good, evil, light, darkness. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, I, I think this is a this is a script where pauses are are everything, even though they may not be in there. So that it kind of gives you, it's kind of a forge, the pause is kind of a little bit of foreshadowing to show that you're kind of doing direct opposites, kind of like Nathan's telling you. Yeah. Of good and evil. Of light and darkness. You know. I see. So I'm not really coloring the words nearly enough, I suppose. Yeah, you just have to color them more. All right. Throughout time, whatever time may be, epic struggles have taken place. Battles of good versus evil. Light against darkness. Battles that overthrow suppression. Inspiring and giving hope to them who had none. Turning generations of bondage into people of freedom. Yeah, that felt better. A little better on the color, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sounded better in my ears anyway. What do you think, Shane? Shane? Yeah. Okay, yeah. what do you think? It was, a, oh, it was much better. Yeah, that was a good direction, Nathan. I uh, 
it's kind of something I hadn't, and I've been out of practice for a few weeks here for a couple different reasons, but, um, uh, I do so understand. <laughs> I'm trying to stay in practice because when I get my next few pieces of copy, <laughs> I, I so understand because it was a few weeks of, you know, stuff going on and, you know, getting ready to go to and getting ready to come back from and, then I had some copy to read in between and I got so into my head and I was like, I know how to do this. I can become two different characters on a dime. What's wrong with me? And the director's like, you're just overthinking it. Calm down and you can do this. I believe in you. <laughs> I think we're all guilty of that from time to time. Yeah. And that's a matter of just not overthinking it and, Basically, you got to get so way outside of yourself, you know. I mean, I did something the other day, and and of course, um, what I attached to that image uh, I did during a mic check, the Joker monologue. Uh, I don't know if you heard it, but I did it during a mic check and I cut it out and I <laughs> put it on SoundCloud because like, yeah, this is too good not to keep. <laughs> so, But uh, the other day, my wife bought me a green wig. And so I went all out and did the full Joker thing to do modeling for a backdrop that she bought that looks like a city street from Gotham. <laughs> so, <Wow. laughs> nice. And, uh, well, the person she did the review for, she's like, you need to do more stuff like that. Throw the humor into it as much as possible. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, Oh, goody. I get to perform more, but yeah, it's like, you just, you kind of just kind of, kind of, But everything that would be uh, in the way, out the door, you know, because when I'm in here, I'm in another world, you know, for a voice actor, it's like Doctor Who. My booth is my TARDIS. It takes me to all kinds of places, mm. <laughs> you know, strange yeah. analogy. Yes, but it works. And yeah, and even when you're doing movie trailers, it's like. I'm reading this, but I'm in the movie, you know, I'm a part of this thing, you know, in the case of this trailer, I was in this movie. Nice. 15 seconds, but I was in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Inmate number five. If you ever get to see it, just, I'm the shortest guy in the room. <laughs> All the other actors were way taller than me. <laughs> so, yeah. Rhonda likes to say that I was not a criminal in that movie. She's like, no, you're an undercover cop. There you I'm go. in a lineup, but you're an undercover cop pretending to be a criminal. False You can catch the guy. It was kind of an impromptu extra thing, too, because uh, the guy that was supposed to be there uh, didn't make it. You never know how you might book a gig. <laughs> you, know, you may be the replacement, and you don't know it, but you end up having this full-on something, you know? It can always happen that way. I think any screen time is good screen time. Yeah. Well, hey, Takia, do you want to take a crack at this? Uh, sure. Remember, this is this is a character type of thing. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll do it like this, okay? Because actually, see, in the movie, um, my uh, the guy that produced this movie, he had a guy actually do these lines in the movie as one of the characters. Ah, okay. So, um, he also used this for the trailer, but he had he had somebody read these lines as a, as one of the characters in the movie. Oh, okay. So, 
imagine yourself as your um an you're an angelic being standing outside of time watching all of this go on because that's that's what the character in the movie was ah uh, okay I probably should have done this with John too <laughs> that's my piece of direction for you okay um i'm kind of unfamiliar with the movie but i'll try so what do i read up to just read all six lines okay throughout time wherever time may be Epic troubles have been taking place. Battle of good versus evil, light against darkness. Battle that overthrows suspicion, inspiring and giving hope to them who had none. Turning generations into a uh, pickup, turning generations of bondage into people of freedom very good ah, thanks yeah i think you really picked up on the uh, on the color of the words a lot better than i did especially with inspiring and giving hope to them that had none that really worked for me ah um, well, like again, I am unfamiliar with the movie, but um, I've kind of listened to a lot of uh movie trailers and stuff. I mean, they're uh pretty much everywhere, even though I don't watch TV anymore, I just um see them on YouTube when I'm watching YouTube videos, and sometimes I <laughs> um, watch uh, those trailers on the videos. And I also, I think, mm, I think I also picked in a little uh, chip from um, a famous voice actor that I look up to tremendously, um, Lonnie Manella. So uh, I kind of pick up some things from her because I'm listening to a lot of her interviews and everything like that. So, eh, I think I'm, I believe um, I picked up a lot of things from her as well. So It's, yeah. it's working for you. See, that's the whole thing about getting into this. If you're not able to make it to something, there's mm -hmm. always uh, uh, available stuff online to immerse yourself in yeah to kind of help to adjust and mold your mindset for it mm -hmm. you now there's all kinds of resources and it, it I mean between um, books that have interactive links <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. seriously I mean nowadays it's like uh, what was it uh, James Allberger's book on voiceover he has QR codes in them that you can scan and you can go to a uh, it'll, it'll take you to a, a private SoundCloud with voiceover lessons on them ah so he's got MJ Lalo um, oh gosh there's a long list of names okay and, you know if you have his book you can go listen to the stuff on their SoundCloud and and you know, kind of pick up, and he he himself talks about you know certain things, and he's got you know different techniques and stuff that he teaches. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of available stuff. And by the way, Pat Fraley stuff, um, the stuff that he puts out there, mm -hmm. is on SoundCloud. Hmm. So I mean, you're into character acting, so I would suggest going there. These are some resources for everybody, and everybody who's listening on YouTube. There's some resources for you. PatFraley.com. Um, James Allberger's book. Uh, there's also the Voice Acting Mastery uh, podcast. 
Oh, Lord, yeah. there's a bucket load of podcasts and YouTube channels to go to and find out, you know, things you need to find out, you know. And I'm not negating getting coaching. That's a must, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of good coaches out there, you know. And the good coaches will train you and they will train you right. Well, with all that, thank you guys for coming to the mic check. And next week we'll all be back, Michael included. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, those of you who are listening, come on over and subscribe. Join Voice Artists United. Hey. We have a large group of very awesome people, and we're all here for each other to help each other out and, and just to do this business right. And so with that, I will catch you guys next week. Thank you, Nathan. Hi, this is Pat Fraley, and here's a simple lesson to